happening here, I'm going to show you the basics of orienteering. Today I'll be showing you how to use an orienteering compass because it's easier to use for orienteering. This is called a engineer's directional compass. You might have commonly seen these with uh, military type stuff or in movies. I honestly don't know how to use it yet. If I learn how to use it, I'll probably make a video about it. With the orienteering compass, you have the base, the scale that goes along the base, both in inches and millimeters, the direction of travel arrow, the compass housing with a dial that reads 0 to 360 degrees around it of bearing. The compass needle, which red points north, white points south. You also have lines within the compass housing to help you orient magnetic north on the map to your compass. This is an orienteering map that was used during a scouting orienteering competition in 2005. I took part in it. It was a lot of fun. I've done a few of them. This was at June Norcross Webster Scout Reservation. They hosted a lot of really good orienteering competitions, but that's, that's beside the point right now. I'm just teaching you the basics. So, on an orienteering map, you have the map legend, which shows you, well, you wouldn't have the map legend if you were doing a harder course, let me just say that, but you, it shows you the different features that will be shown on this map. Usually these maps are topographical, showing you contour lines, which show you elevation change. This map, I believe, was every 5 to 10 feet in elevation change had a contour line. You can see where there are tops of hills when there's just a closed circle. So like right here. And then you'll see that the hill slopes down from that top point. On orienteering maps you have a magnetic north set of lines that go across the entire map itself. There are multiple lines. Um, the map itself will be oriented, I think, most, most, if not all of the time, to Magnetic North for an orienteering competition map specifically. Most other maps will be oriented still to, mag to uh, True North, actually. Orienteering competition maps have a set of control points for each orienteering course. Um, so it starts off with the triangle, and it's numbered to each point. Each point is the circle. And between each point, there is a connecting line, which helps you to get the compass edge along that to orient here, which I'll show you right now. So let's say I want to go from point 4 to point 5. I'll take the edge of the compass and line it up on that line that connects the two control points. Now that would be... You could use this if you were just not doing an orienteering competition, but you were you knew where you were on the map and you wanted to get to another point, just use the same concept. So now that that's along that edge and it's lined up pretty well, we'll turn the compass housing until those lines and the mag uh, magnetic north arrow line up with magnetic north on the map. So usually, if you can catch one of those lines on the actual magnetic north lines on the map, it makes it a lot easier and probably a little more accurate. So now that that's set, we're going to turn this compass until Red Fred is in the shed. That's the red arrow, the red magnetic north arrow meets the other magnetic north arrow, if that makes any sense. You're taking this arrow, putting it in the rather red arrow, and now you've got your compass oriented. So from there, you'll see 
read bearing here. So this, this is showing you your bearing on the very uh, 12 o'clock position on the dial. This arrow pointing to the 12 o'clock position on the entire compass base is showing you the actual direction of travel you want to be going. So now that you have this set, you can just take this compass and as long as you're going the same unidirectional path, then that will always be your heading to that control point. Generally speaking, in an orienteering competition, there won't be a direct line of travel from one control point to the next. So let's take a look at these control points. So from Y8 to Y9, Y determining the actual course itself, there is pretty much zero, there's no trail or road leading directly from both control points, or connecting them, I should say. A lot of it has to do with not directly traveling through, say, like a lot of brush and doing a lot of bushwhacking to get to the next control point, but going off your compass bearing and also going, and also using the existing trails to get to your next point quicker. Usually control points will be at a spot, say like a huge boulder or an evergreen among a bunch of maple trees or something like that. Um, so that's just a side note for if you're planning on doing orienteering competitions to begin with. If you actually really plan on doing it, I suggest you, you go and ask someone who is more knowledgeable than me because I am just a beginner as well. I've only been to a few competitions and I've done pretty well at them, but that's only at an early scouting level. So with that covers the fundamentals of orienteering. These are the absolute basics, and I suggest you go look at other videos if I haven't already posted advanced tutorials on how to orienteer. I hope you learned something.